British medical workers who have expressed an interest in working in Ebola-affected countries attended a training program on Wednesday. A total of 4,493 people have died from the world's worst Ebola outbreak on record. The WHO said a total of 8,907 confirmed, probable and suspected cases of Ebola have been reported in seven countries as of October the 12th, with the vast majority of these in three West African nations, Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone. Among those who attended the training session in London was British nurse William Pooley, who survived Ebola after contracting the virus in West Africa. He explained the reason why he wanted to go back. Um, just the situation on the ground at the moment in, uh, in Sierra Leone in particular, um, they need a lot of help and uh, that's why people are here tonight to, uh, to offer that help and it's great, great to see people volunteering, um, volunteering their services. Lecturer in emergency response Amy Hughes too said there was a need for urgent response against the spread of Ebola. So yes, there is a worry there, but any work you do in the humanitarian context, any work you do in different environments like that, there's going to be a risk. Um, there's, and, and part of my passion for that, it, you know, you, you consider that risk, you weigh it up, but that drive to go, that drive to help, that drive to be part of that team that's really um, going to be delivering that healthcare there and targeting that need is, is over, you know, almost overrides that, that fear, that personal fear. Musician Bob Geldof, who organised the charity Band Aid and the Live Aid concerts to raise money for famine relief in Ethiopia, said a lack of resources was to blame for the toll the virus has taken. They are not dying of this filthy little virus in West Africa. They are dying because, unlike in Madrid and Texas, they do not have the doctors, the nurses, the, med the Medicare. They are, dying. they are dying because they are poor. I don't like that. That cannot stand. 